Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome um, to the this class, the tech, creating textures and effects within watercolors. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of different fun things today. I'm actually going to kind of switch over to the overhead camera because it's a little easier for me to show things on that. Um, so give me a second to do that. Um, but before I do that, we'll talk about supplies because I know you should have kind of a flat bristle brush. It has a nice flat edge to it. You should have like a round, what's called a round, kind of looks like a marker tip kind of pen, uh, paint brush, oh my gosh. And then um, the hockey brush, a goat hair brush. We're holding onto a lot of water when we're painting. You should have like a straw of some kind, um, some paper towels, or a rag, if you prefer rags, um, a little piece of paper, or plastic rather. I have an old uh, newspaper bag <laughs> that I cut up. And then some salt, water of course, and like a mixing palette and the pipettes if I gave you those. You don't necessarily need these, but they can be, they're gonna be helpful for a couple of different things that we're doing later, but you can do them without the pipettes if you don't have the pipettes. So. I'm going to go ahead and spotlight. Okay, so we're going to be doing a couple different types of effects. We're going to go a little bit more in depth with kind of using salt and then like creating soft edges, kind of using the water itself as a barrier to create different shapes and mixing the colors within like. A very wet surface um, using both paint and water to create different effects within paint on the paper. Doing a little bit about splattering with paint to create some fun like droplet effects but also blowing paint with a bra with a straw or a hair dryer to kind of create more of a splatter look. Um, I'll kind of also talk about holding the brush and using like your round brush to create like leaf shapes and things like that and doing some different um, line work and shapes with the more flat brush, the bright brush, sometimes what it's called, Gilbert, depending on what company you get it from. And kind of also what's called negative painting as well. So we're kind of, there's gonna be a lot of different things we're gonna go over some of the techniques before working them into like one whole painting kind of thing. And you can do whatever you want with it. It doesn't have to be exactly what I'm doing. You can use any colors you want. It's more just to demonstrate how to work with the water, how to work with the paint, and how to create these different final effects. And so we'll probably be working on a couple different things at a time, just because, especially working with salt, it does take some time to dry things that are a little bit more on the wet side, like these four hours here, those do take a bit of time to dry because you're working on a fairly wet surface. So you can make them big, you can make them small, depending on the paper you're using and the size. So I know most of the paper I gave people is uh, this size, which is about uh, six inches by about nine inches, about a half paper page size. And I have some smaller ones just because I gave you guys all the pre-cut paper, so. <laughs> and, uh, and for those of you that were in the class last week, we are using a slightly different paper today. So this is a thicker paper. This paper is 100% cotton. Um, it absorbs the water a little bit differently. It doesn't buckle quite as much as a cotton and cellulose blend. Um, a, you can get a little bit more vibrancy from the colors when you're using it. Uh, so this is the paper that we used last week and then this is one that I was doing some demo on. So even though this is the same shade of orange on my on my camera it might not read quite as differently but in person this is a little bit more vibrant and the paper's staying a little wetter longer 
And so it's allowing that um, pigment to kind of seep into the paper a little bit more and become a little bit more permanent into the paper versus um, when you're using a blend, it doesn't kind of absorb into the fabric of the paper as much or the fibers of the paper as much. So. So to begin, I am, oh, so for no Nobu and other people that were in both classes, the, the paper that is 100% cotton for you is going to have very clean edges all the way around because it was pre-cut when I ordered it, and then the, the blend will have a torn edge on one side because I got a stack and put them in half for people. So. Totally. There's a little bit of textural difference too. One side is texture, or like the cotton one has a little bit more texture on both sides, and then the the cotton cellulose blend is more smooth on one side, more flat, almost like a cardstock. It doesn't have as much of a fabric feel to it. So, so I am taking the. Yeah, if you just signed up for classes two or for two and three or just for this one, like it's gonna be all the cut and that's all the 100% cotton paper. So, uh, yeah. So I am gonna start just by getting some color on my flat brush, the bright. They have a lot of different names, but they're all pretty similar. Like this one is called one stroke, but it basically does the same thing. It's a very flat squared off edge of a brush, flat edge here. And this is really helpful um, for creating very nice, even strokes of paint on your paper. Um, so with that, you can do, you have a base color down, you can use it to create kind of like bricks if you're trying to do like a building. Um, you can also use it Yeah, you can definitely use the back side of watercolor paper if you're just practicing with it. It's totally a thing you can do too. Um, but with the flat brush too, you can create some thinner lines sometimes that are a little bit more even. You can kind of tap it along to create more of an even line. And it's just a handy brush because it covers a little bit more surface area than um, a, a round brush will. I can still get some fine lines with my round brush, but it's it's not quite as wide, obviously. But unlike the hockey brush, it doesn't hold on to nearly as much water, so you can have a little bit more control with it. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure someone was asking me to pin it, so I wanted to double check. Thank you. <laughs> the different devices, they, they choose spotlight or pinning a little bit differently, and it, you never know what it's going to do for you. And with this too, you can also kind of create blends of color. So if you want to do kind of like a sunset, you can use it to just place some color down and kind of carry two different colors into themselves as well. And let those kind of slowly blend into each other as well. <laughs> and so it's a handy brush to have on hand. We'll use it a few more times today as well. Um, but I just wanted you guys to get a little bit familiar with it as well, especially if you've been practicing just with 
more of this kind of style paintbrush because a lot of watercolor kits will come with more of like this kind of a watercolor brush versus some of the different um, different paintbrushes that are out there. You can also use this for some different uh, dry brush technique as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and do a little bit of a shape here and then go in with a little bit of a thicker, thicker paint on my brush and I'm just mixing on my lid right now. I'll use my palette later when we do some more wet where I need a little bit more of the paint to do what I'm doing and so kind of like with any brush you can do this with is you can kind of splay the brushes out with your fingers a little bit and do some quick strokes with it to create a little bit more of a textured look so this is good for like if you're doing like tree bark or if you're doing dirt or if you're um, doing water texture on a building, things like that. This is a really handy, again, handy brush because it does a little bit wider of uh, a dry brush technique. You can do a little bit more on it. And with more of the natural 100% cotton papers, there's a little bit more texture to them sometimes. And so you're gonna have a little bit more for that brush to grab onto and create more of that rugged, rough texture versus the smooth lines when you're doing those really quick strokes. So the next one I'm going to be demonstrating is we're going to be using a little bit of plastic to create these kind of fun effects. Um, you can use these for sky or water. Kind of, make, it almost looks to me it looks like pockets of air in like an ice puddle when it it's all said and done. Um, but this is really fun to do as a base layer and build upon. Um, depending on where your air pockets kind of land with the plastic, it'll create different shapes. So I'm going to go ahead and do. A little bit of a dark blue. So what the plastic does um, is it kind of pulls up the paint wherever you set it down at. So I have mine, it's my paint square is pretty wet. It's not like dripping on me, but it has a good amount of gloss to it. When it starts to get a little bit more matte, that's what's called like the velvet stage of the watercolor paper. So we want it to be still fairly shiny and wet when you put the plastic on. And you can play around with doing this at different stages of wetness with the paint as well. And I'm just gonna tap it on just lightly. My strip of plastic's pretty big, it's actually a tube, so I'm gonna cut that so you can see what it's doing. And you can kind of play with the bubbles. So you can see that it, it's cutting to the water. It wants to kind of stick to the water on the paper. And you're just gonna let it sit until it's mostly dry. So it'll take a few minutes. Um, so this is a lot of things. One of the annoying things about watercolor is to get a lot of the really cool effects. You kind of have to like start it and then set it off to the side and come back to it, <laughs> which gets a little frustrating sometimes, but you end up with some really cool effects. So I'm doing this on the blue. This is what I did. I did kind of like a sunset fade here earlier, and this is what I did there. But it's going to be a little random every single time you do it. So sometimes you might really like it, sometimes you might not. Um, you can use saran wrap too, grocery bag plastic, really anything for this. Um, you can kind of do it with leaves as well. Like if you pull a leaf up on the ground, you can use that. If you want to get more creative with it, you can do 
random vegetables wraps too. Like there's some fun things you can do because it's all just gonna affect the paper and the and the paint a little bit differently. I'm just gonna set that one to the side and we'll take a look at it when it sits a little bit more dry and see see how it turned out. So for this next one, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the hockey brush because it holds on to a lot of water. I'm just going to gently tap it on the side here of my water container so it's not completely sopping wet. And I'm going to do just a general flower shape with it. So I'm just using the brush and drawing some lines with it to create kind of a petal look I'm using kind of the flat edge. And it should be fairly runny. So you should see kind of pools of water on your paper. And I'm going to go in with my round brush and grab a couple colors that look, that kind of, I think look nice together. So I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of bright orange. And I'm just going to plop it in those water lines that I've made. And I'm going to go in with another color. I'm going to go in with my yellow. And kind of place it where I want. Mix it a little bit on the paper too. And then I'm also going to go in with that blue that I was really liking. And I'm going to mix that before I put it on the paper with a little bit of that orange to create a little bit more of a purple tone. I'm going to throw that in there as well. And you can always pick up your paper, move it around a little bit, let those colors kind of flow into them a little bit more. Or you can just let them sit and see what happens to them. The effects and texture part of watercolors is just a lot of playing with the paint and kind of seeing how it reacts, um, seeing how it works with itself, playing with the, the amount of paint you're using and suspending in the water. So either doing more of a heavy on the water, light on the paint, And you can do this with different shapes as well, circles, squares, triangles, any of it, all of it, all of them work out really fun.
And so this one I did kind of more of a mountain shape, so a little bit of a variation of a triangle, if you will, um, and added more of a green. I didn't bring the color all the way down because I wanted to see how the water and the paint mixed and kind of faded out. And that can help create a nice soft effect as well. And because I know this is going to take a little bit more time to draw on this same piece of paper, since I'm using the round brush, I'm going to demonstrate kind of how to use this to do more like leaf shapes or flower petal shapes as well. Um, so I'm taking my brush and I'm taking a little bit of color on it and I'm making sure it's not super wet because for this one I want it to dry a little faster. So again, taking that brush and kind of pulling some of that extra water off so it's not super, super saturated, but it still has a good amount of paint on there. And I'm going to do like a little bit of a rose or a rosette. And so an easy way to do that with the round brush is you're going to hold it fairly parallel with the paper, a little bit of an angle, but it shouldn't be like upright, it should be fairly flat. And you're going to do kind of a curve, kind of like a, like a moon shape or a half circle or a quarter circle shape. And you're going to do that a couple times in various directions. And it kind of creates a nice little rose, a rose shape. And you can play with that a little bit by adding a little bit of water on the edges of those outer ones and softening them up, making them wider. You can also push a little more to make the brush, the bristles of the brush flare out a little bit more as well to create a similar kind of effect. And you can do the same thing also with the flat brush. So what I'm doing with this one is I'm kind of a little bit more of a steep angle almost like a 45 degree angle with the paper here. And I'm just kind of rotating it a little bit. And it gives me a little bit of a different shape. A little bit of a wider. And then I can also use the edge here, the edge of this sort of straighter line, harsher line as well. You can also use the flat brush and just kind of Turn it, rotate it in your hand to create more of like a perfect circle kind of silhouette. And so with that, my brush is fairly vertical with the paper, not 100% perpendicular, but very close to it. And I'm just holding the brush in place and kind of rotating my fingers or the brush in my fingers to help kind of create more of a round, round circle. 